Okay, everybody, welcome to my first attempt at StreamYard. I'm uh, Mr. Grandy, although for today I'll be known as the Grandalorian. And I'm going to talk to you about the first six episodes of the Book of Boba Fett, which we've been watching and sort of enjoying. Uh, got some issues with it. Uh, we're six episodes in, and episode seven is coming out in two days on Wednesday. So, in order to further explore this topic i have a couple of people who are going to join us so my first guest i'm going to bring in is the one the only bubba fett bubba yo fett. what's good what's good i'm a little bit pissed mandalorian or should i say grandalorian that you're not liking my show but we'll get hey. into it <laughs> hey i have something to say to you yeah what? i am your father <laughs> not even possible i'm older than you <laughs> And uh, our next guest, we're also going to bring in to talk about the one, the only, the armorer herself, the mommerer. And Say hi. Hi. Is that thing is, I don't even know who this character is. It's the armor. <laughs> She's the one that makes the armor pieces for the man. Oh, oh, when he went, he got everything molded. Oh, I know who that is now. Yeah. And he made the little mithril chainmail suit for Grogu. Oh my gosh, it's all coming together. It's all coming Yo, together. Oh, that's so okay. I like this. I like this character. All right. Okay. Uh -huh. So we're all we're all uh sort of Mandalorians here. Um, although Boba Fett is uh he's from Mandalorian descent, but he's not really a Mandalorian. Yeah, I um, do my own thing. You do your own thing. Yeah, uh, let's take the helmet off all the You're time. You're not even showing up for your own show, so that about says it sums it up, right? Yeah, yeah what chill. did you say the yeah, other chill, night? Chill. What'd you say the other night? You said it's it's the book of everybody but Boba Fett. It's the book of everybody but Boba Fett, but chill, 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 chill. All right. So how do we want to do this? Do we want to just do like a general synopsis of what the show's been about so far? Yeah. Other than just filler until we get to season three of The Mandalorian? Well, this is what I'll say. I'll take off the Boba Fett persona. I'm going to go back to being Doug, the son <laughs> of uh, the Grandalorian Mamarer. And I'll say this. I feel like Boba Fett was way cooler in the Mandalorian season two than he was in this whole season. Like he's just been kind of like, you know, sitting around, you know, la da 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 da. Oh, I'll go see the mayor. Oh, he's not there. I'll send these freaking like these speeder bike kids to go chase after this dude at 12 miles per hour. While I'm just chilling. It's not like I have a jetpack or anything with a missile on it. It's like, <laughs> dude, step up. You trying to be the crime boss? Step up and do something. Yeah, that's, that's true. You know, speaking of the speeders and the jetpack and being able to fly, one of the the plot points of this this show is that um they're they're trading in spice i don't know if they're just stealing this from dune i mean star wars is kind of stolen from dune anyway because the dune books were written in the 60s and i'm sure george lucas read them but like why are they shipping spice around the planet on speeders and trains like why aren't they just flying them there with ships like we have spaceships everywhere that's a good you can't question. swing a cat without hitting a spaceship because if that were the case, then Tuscan Raiders would just not be a part of the show. That's that's true. I didn't even think of that. That that is so true. So and that's true. like another thing about this show that like I kind of like I'm a little annoyed with because when they did like the flashback sequences where it was like two separate timelines, like when he was with the Tuscans and when he was, you know, the crime boss, I felt like the Tuscan stuff was way more interesting. Like they were actually like doing things. But now it's like he's just sitting around. It's like, what's good? Yeah, you know, so, I kind of felt that way. Oh, go ahead. Can the mummer jump in here? I felt the first couple of episodes were a good intro, and then it fell off, and then he just fell out of it totally. Like I thought when they first introduced his story, and then when they took us into that tank and he was doing his dreams or wherever he was going to his flashbacks, I thought this setup was good, but then the middle he just. I, I don't know where he went. Like, no, wait, hold on. So the setup was good. And then I agree with you, Boba Fett. That it just, it's like, where did you go? It's just this weak character. And then, then he kind of went into oblivion. I don't know. But I thought the setup was good. What did y'all think? What do you think, it, Dad? It had promise. I, I liked, I liked the back to tank flashbacks where he's, he's healing himself. He's been injured. Uh, from his time in the Sarlacc and trying to escape 
But then, like, it just got goofy with, like, oh, I'm going to go back and look for my armor. Well, you crawled out of the Sarlacc with your armor on. Why would it be back in there? And then you're, like, hovering right over and it grabs you and, like, you can't reach the bomb button because you're in the wrong orientation. And then, of course, Mulan hits it because the, the girl who's playing Fennec is uh, the actress who played Mulan in the animated Mulan movie. But she hits it and it just happens to roll off the back of the ship and roll right down into the Sarlacc's mouth. And then, of course, it wasn't there because you crawled out with it. It's like things just don't make sense. And then if I guess if you want to get a job working for Boba Fett, you just try and kill him. Because everybody who's working for him now were people who tried to kill him. The Wookiee. Yeah, the Wookiee, the Gamorrean guards. <laughs> like, who's next? The Hut's going to work for him? <laughs> next Darth Vader's going to work for him. Syndicate. <laughs> exactly. No, you know what I really want to see? I want to see in this last episode, Luke, like, or uh, Han Solo, because Han Solo is alive at this point. I want him to come back just to accidentally kill Boba Fett again. <laughs> well, so if you bring Han Solo back, I wonder if they could get that guy. Right. To put him in the Solo movie. That would be pretty cool. But yeah, that... <laughs> speaking of like the next episode, because I, I did want to do some predictions for uh, for the next episode. The biggest question is going to be what do you guys think Grogu is going to choose the lightsaber or the uh, the best scar chain link garment? I guess that the Mandalorian had made for him. Well, this is what I'll say: if he chooses the lightsaber, it doesn't push his like character forward. The character of Grogu, because like it's the same place that he was at the end of Mandalorian season two. He's just going back off with Luke. It's like we already saw that happen. So if they're like interjecting a choice here. That could like you know, uh, rope people in and like add some interest to the character again. It's like why would they just do the same thing they already did? So I think he's going to take the chainmail. You think? He's- yeah. yeah, Mama. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've talked about this, and so I'm going to step out of just the the story to say marketing wise, fan base. You know, there's been so much hype over this the child, and it, it sells way more for him to be back with Mando than not to be so i mean do i think the character is going to take the 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 armor yeah but do i think disney's going to have him go with mando yes because that promotes what the fans i think want Hmm. so other predictions for this last episode oh the the other big prediction for this episode um is uh marshall cobb vanth still alive we get, we get the sense that he just got shot once maybe in the shoulder mm-hmm. and then the deputy got blown away like three times yeah i think he he is still alive because after he got shot like the little townspeople came in like put like a rag on it like as if he was still alive so of course that's uh timothy oliphant he's going to be back mm-hmm. um are we going to he's, gonna... he's, oh, he's an awesome actor i I really like him. So my question for y'all is then, do you think they're going to do another series of this? Because why would what would be the reason to keep him on? Like, would he be then in the Mandalorian? Yeah, you might. You think coming back because what well, he was in one of the episodes of the Mandalorian. Do you think he, he was in back? one episode? Yeah, he right. had. He's the one that had Boba Fett's armor. Right. Yep. So and do then- you think he'll go back into the Mandalorian? Like, what what's the purpose of keeping him alive? Because he runs Mos Pelgo, I guess that's the name of that town. Right. He's the he's the sheriff. He's Raylan Givens. Um, Raylan Givens. What I just find interesting about this whole show is like, as soon as Mando comes in, it's just like I'm way more interested to see what Mando's doing. Yeah. Like I hate to say it, but like, you know, Boba Fett is the OG. You know what I mean? Like he was the cool, you know, he was the the cool little like underdog that you saw in Empire Strikes Back where he doesn't have a lot of lines, but he looks so cool that like everybody loves him. Oh, but like at this point, that's Mando now because Mando is the guy everybody loves. He's the OG from the Star Wars holiday special. All right. Yeah. When he was introduced as a cartoon character, he was cool. Yep. He was the only good thing to come out of that holiday special. What are you talking and about? Those... That was a banger. Yeah. <laughs> and for those of you that are talking ever. about, you need to web search that. Star Wars holiday special from 1977 and watch in horror and how bad that was. Um, Wait, a this more- is before, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. 
this is for your students, right? Yeah. So I can also say today in class, I asked my students about if, you know, anyone was watching the show and what would their predictions be? And it's funny, the first thing out of one of my students' um, thoughts was it didn't start getting until um, episode five. And was that when the Mandalorian came in? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that is across, kind of what you were saying, Bubba, across mm -hmm. the board, all of my students were like, yeah, that's only when it started getting good. And then, of course, somebody raised their hand. It's like, wait, don't say anything. I'm only on one. I don't want any spoilers. But I guess he already was spoiled because... You heard that, yeah. And you say, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I know. Catch up. <laughs> I mean, honestly, episodes five is my favorite episode of the whole show. It is. And how much Boba Fett was in that episode? Not at all. Zero. It was I, I just find it funny that this is a show on Disney Plus, and you literally see Mando cut a guy in half after already being stabbed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Disney can't let these guys curse, but they can let them get freaking mutilated. They're and going we're, rogue. They're going rogue. Bubba, weren't you the one who asked why they didn't have some kind of interaction between Mando and Luke regarding the Darksaber? Yeah, I wanted to see that so bad. Like, how did they just skip that? Yeah. Well, Mando didn't even like get to see Luke, did he? He only yeah, saw Ahsoka. Didn't he, didn't he talk to Luke and Luke said, you know, he can't... I thought he know. just talked to Ahsoka. I thought he talked to Luke at the very end... Before he left, he gave, I thought he gave Luke the armored piece, the little chainmail shirt, and then he left. No, nah, no, nah, he gave that to Ahsoka and then he left because he? Luke says to Ahsoka, so the Mandalorian was here. Oh, Those you're like right. Questions here like that. Yeah. That was in, in what we we're talking about just this last episode? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, think Luke said to, to Groku that the Mandalorian was there because he kept looking around. Yeah, that shot is heartbreaking when Mandalorian's flying away in the ship and Grogu's like got his hand out. I know. That's I see, that's why back. totally, 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 he's totally going with totally yep. Mando, totally. Are we going to see any, um, in the last episode, are we going to see any more returning characters? Are we going to see Bo-Katan show up with her Mandalorians that take their helmets off? I don't think Bo-Katan would show up. Just because if they do, then it's immediately going to be like a dark saber thing because she still wants the dark saber. So, what about, what about Chubbs? Will he show up? Uh, Grief Karga. Who's that? Chubbs from uh, Happy Gilmore. Um, oh, <laughs> he's, the guy, he's the guy who gives Mando the assignments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, if he doesn't have a golf lesson to teach, golf. <laughs> can we resurrect the assassin droid one more time too? I think he got, I think he got melted up or blew up in the, uh, yeah, in the lava river in season one of the Mandalorian. Yeah, Tyga. He was trying to think of other characters, and I, I forgot the the old guy that rode on the the back of the blurg that always said like, "I have spoken." Didn't he die at the end of season one of the Mandalorian? I think he did. I just yeah, he did. Like, would he show up? But I, I think he, because he, he was died. trying to like that was when they were um doing that mission on that planet, and um he was he had the child and trying and he was trying to run with the child back to the ship, and then he got shot and they took the child. Yeah, that's right. Well, it seems like so long ago now when I when I think back. Yeah. On these other episodes. And why was he ago. trying to steal it again? Who? The child. No, he wasn't trying to steal the child. He was trying to like help the child. Oh, that was in the Mandalorian? Yeah. Yeah, this is season one. Oh, I totally forget that. Yup, yup. The end of season one. So, I don't wait, know. I, wait, Mandalorian, you didn't say what your prediction was. Uh, I think he's going to go with Mando. He's going to take the uh, the best car and, uh, and leave. Because wow. I, I just, I don't know that that's not going to cause continuity problems with the movies with Anakin or uh, Ben Solo, Kylo Ren killing all the, uh, the other Jedi. Didn't he kill all the other Jedi kids? And like, yeah, he, he, burned burned the temple. he burned the temple down and all that. The At least now we got to see where the temple came from too. Yeah. That's an interesting thing that I've also thought about where it's like, 
I love what they're doing with Luke right now. And like, you get to see like, you know, him like starting his Jedi temple, but it's kind of like depressing and like kind of, you know, annoying to know how it was treated in the sequels. Yeah. I mean, that was horrible. What they it's did. like the sequels almost kind of ruined it for me, but not really. Cause I still love it. But. Maybe we can bring the infinity stones into star Wars and then just use the reality stone and just eliminate those sequels <laughs> and redo them. Thanos come in and erase it. Yeah, because the sequels were just uh, horrible with what they did with our our legacy characters. Yeah. Wait, is that Jar Jar when Jar Jar shows up? No. No, that's in the prequels. <laughs> and that's it too. You know, Thanos should eliminate Jar Jar too. <laughs> Mama. Is that come the on, Mama. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Mama, you're about to get kicked, yo. You say one more thing like that, Mama, you're going to get kicked, yo. Hey, okay. I, I make all the armor. I, I can, I can. Mess yeah. Up. All right. All right. You religious zealot, take off yeah. your helmet. Why don't you? Crazy nope. religious zealot. I'm not. I'm not allowed to. Right. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not allowed to. Only if you're eating soup with Mando can you take your helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> or you're on a on an empire uh, in an empire base. Yeah. Yeah, they got to bring Bill Burr back and uh, and some of those other guys. Bill Burr might come back. He might come back as like part of the muscle that he uh, um, Boba Fett hires. Yeah, that's right. You know, I, I'm trying to remember now in the Mandalorian. So he takes over Jabba the Hutt's crime syndicate, whatever. What ha did they explain what happened to Bib Fortuna, the the guy with the two big things on his head that had taken over after Jabba the Hutt died? Like I think in canon, Boba Fett killed him. Oh, did he really? But I don't remember anything about that. Like Boba Fett doesn't really do anything. He's a crime lord that doesn't crime. He's a bounty hunter that doesn't bounty hunt anymore. And in the last couple episodes, he was missing in one, and the other one he nodded once. So yeah. I, I don't know exactly what he what he's doing in this show. Also, it's taken us six episodes to get an antagonist that we yeah, can actually see. Well, there's a prediction for you at the end of this episode coming up on Wednesday. Will Cad Bane survive for a future season? I would think that um, he would have to, just because he's such a beloved character from the Clone Wars. That like they're really going to introduce him just for him to die. Like he's going to get you know barely one episode of like you know screen time. Like I don't see it. Now who's going to defeat him though? Will it be Mando, Boba Fett, or Fennec? It's got to be Boba Fett. Uh, you would think it it have to be Boba Fett in his own show, but then again, Black Widow was a secondary character in her own movie. So mm. I, I, I'm not totally trustworthy with what Disney's going to do here. Well, right. I mean, Boba Fett already is basically a second character in his own show. It'll be that woman. Who's the, who's the girl? Um, Milan. Fennec. Yeah. Oh, Fennec, yeah. Fennec? You know, I, one thing I can share. So when you all talk all these character names, I, I have no clue I'm, I'm not really you know I, i've seen star wars with with you all but pretty much that's about it I, I do find this an enjoyable like i found the mandalorian enjoyable i really enjoyed those seasons and i i did i mean i know we're talking bad about you know he's not even his own show but i have enjoyed i have enjoyed watching this i have enjoyed and i can i can follow it you know even though i don't know who all these people are i do think that's a good thing that they've done are you becoming a Star Wars nerd? No, good golly, no. I mean, I told my students the movies, a lot of them are bad. And a lot of the things they've done with the shows and that are bad. But for some reason, I still watch them. And I still enjoy, you know, like the Star Wars land down in Disney World. Oh my God, like, you are constantly like, in that Star Wars land in Disney World. I do what? You are constantly in that Star Wars land in Disney World. I know. I'll just walk around in there, and then I made my own lightsaber in in school, and I, I do nerd out on that. Maybe it's because it was my childhood. <clears throat> Sorry, the first movie came out when I was like six, and I went and saw it, and it was like no other science fiction movie I'd ever seen before. There had not been anything on that scale that was um, kid friendly. I mean, two thousand one, A Space Odyssey was amazing, but for a six a six year old's not going to focus that long on a movie like that or understand the, 
the the deeper messages and meanings in that movie. But mm-hmm. Star Wars is a basic cowboy movie set in space that every little kid could get into, and I got into it, and so I've just been hooked ever since. Even though I look back at them, I'm like, wow, this, you know, the sequels were horrible, and some of the things in the prequels were bad, and. And it also just like it keeps your inner kid alive. Like I still, from time to time, check to see if I have the force. Like I'll try to like force pull the remote or something. I still don't, but like I still try. I still force open all the uh, doors at Target, and that when I walk up to the sensors and they open, I always do like a Darth Vader thing. You like, do. Yeah, That's so funny. You do. That's so funny. Yeah, that's like here. Let me get the door for you. And I wave my hand like a. Uh, all right. Wait. I do have a question for both of you. Favorite character, like the, the person that you felt has done the best acting job, favorite character, one you've connected to of this series? Of the Book of Boba Fett? Yeah. Um, wow. Hands down, all the mods doing a great job out there. The teenager mods are great, yeah. Mods. No, no. Honestly, it's Din Djarin. It's Din Djarin. He doesn't yeah, even. Yeah. He has his mask on. It's like he's so good, just with his voice and his body, like posture and language or whatever. Like, it's just so good. Wait, can you can you give me some more context? Where would I see him? How would I? Man, see him? Oh, why, why? Oh, that's his real name. That's his real name. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, mom. Who's Princess Leia? Okay, I do. She's got the 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 buns on the side of her head. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I knew that. Best character done the best job so far. I might have to go with the voice of that droid that like answers all of Boba Fett's questions. All right. Back in the palace, it cracks me up. Um, I guess Mulan, like she's done the most lifting in this show so far for the for the episodes. Mm-hmm. Um if not her, then Ahsoka Tano, maybe I don't know. She's only in one episode, though. But it's hard. It you know it's hard because Boba Fett's just he's either in the back of the tank or he's just standing there. Right. And I will say that like I do really like um what's the guy's name Tamara Morrison or some of like that. Yeah, he's good. Like, he's very good, and I really like what he does with Boba Fett. I just think the scriptwriters just don't know what to do with him. Well, I think they got caught flat-footed. I think it was like, hey, Pedro Pascal is doing. Wonder Woman 1984, whatever movie, and maybe something else. We can't get him back right away for season three of The Mandalorian. So, hey, tomorrow, you want to do a real quick uh, series on Boba Fett? Yeah, sure. And then, you know, hey, uh, Ming Na Wen, I think is her name, you know, can you do it? Can you and it just, okay, let's just throw some episodes together. And uh, who's the bad guy? I don't know. We'll figure it out at the end. We'll, we'll drag, so, drag somebody up from the Clone Wars. And um, mm-hmm. it's like, it's kind of, rudderless directionless with some bad scenes but i mean they've written some good scenes the whole thing with the tuscans and how they adopted him kind of and taught him and yeah, those were great yeah like he came back and he's like i'm part of a family you know the tribe is stronger whatever um it was good that was i i enjoyed that i'm like okay that makes sense now but then and then they just then he just disappears for two episodes and That's honestly, like, I'm not asking for much like just that one scene where he does the drive-by on like those the speed bike gang just completely demolishes them. Like that's Boba Fett. Yeah. He's going out there, kicking butt and taking names. Like that's all I need to see. I'm the greatest bounty hunter in the universe. But he's old. More of that, yeah. He's old and he's, he's, I, I think if they would do it right based on what's happened, he's obviously traumatized. Otherwise, why is he going back to all these dreams? So if, if they're, if they're setting something up, you know, is he passing the torch to the next generation? Cause notice all of his, people that work for him and remember how he's trying to almost kind of repay some debts where he's not killing anyone. He, he brought in all those that remember that gang kind of, so to speak. And right. then he released that person down in the prison. So I think in some ways it does make sense that he's not the, you know, the big bad, um, you know, bounty hunter anymore, but they need to kind of wrap that up because otherwise it does look like he, he just, I don't know. It just doesn't look right. I, yeah, I just feel like they need to, too. yeah, right. They need to put him in more situations where, like, right. he actually does have to like kick butt 
Because like in the Mandalorian season two, when he shows up and he has to beat all those stormtroopers, like it was awesome. Right. Like it was dope. When he has to demolish that speed bike gang, awesome, yo. Great. Just put him in situations. Don't have him sitting around all the time. Wait, can get we get him, one get disintegration? Action. What's that? Can we get one disintegration? Yeah. <laughs> that was the thing from the movies. No disintegrations. As you wish. As you wish. <laughs> I'm the greatest yeah. bounty hunter ever. <laughs> I got a missile backpack. I thought it was so cool in the last show where they had the frogs. Wasn't it the frogs that he was going after? So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that little playback. That, that was so cool. Yeah. That was good. And when he was eating the, the frog lady's babies. Oh, the eggs, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Vintage Grogu. Yeah, I thought that was good. All right. Well, maybe we can do a follow-up uh, stream after uh, Wednesday, and just see which of our predictions came true, and for sure you know, what we have uh, to look forward to for Mando season three. Um, will there be a Boba Fett season two? And there's a trailer on Disney Plus now for Obi Wan Kenobi. Is it really? Yeah, they just came out because uh, that's coming out this year at some point. Uh, if I just check my Helmet data feed here and uh, see what they say about Obi Wan Kenobi. Obi Wan Kenobi 2022 plot undisclosed standalone spinoff. Um, they don't have an air date on IMDb yet, but if the trailer's out, I imagine it's got to be in the next month or two for that. And then uh, I'm just trying to think are there any other Star Wars? Shows they're spinning off. Boba Fett, Mando, Obi Wan. Maybe Jar Jar should get a show. No, oh, golly dang, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, oh, but did you ever see that? What? Jar Jar. Of course. Wait, wait. So when did that come out? That was when in the prequels. Every Star Wars movie. No, but I mean, did you see that in the theater? How? When no. Oh, no, no, he didn't see that in the theater. He saw that on DVD. Okay, I didn't know when that came out. I don't think. Did you see any of the prequels in the theaters? I definitely did not. They were all ones we got after they came out on. Well, here, let's end it with this. Let's end with this. What are okay. your Star Wars movies ranked? Empire's number one. Empire's number one. What's number two? Um. Probably A New Hope, which is episode four. Mm -hmm. Then maybe the first sequel, uh, The Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. And then I think Rogue One. Do we, are we going to fit those in? Nah. Oh, okay. Just the main ones? Yeah. Uh, then you'd have to go Phantom Menace, Revenge of the Sith. Now I'm getting down the bottom of the barrel. I guess the Clone Wars and then The Last Jedi and then The Last Movie is the worst one. Okay, that's interesting. See, this is mine. I got Empire, New Hope, same. Then I have Revenge of the Sith. Then I have Return of the Jedi. Then I have The Force Awakens. Then I have um, Phantom Menace. Then I have Last Jedi. Then I have Attack of the Clone Wars, and then I have the most recent one. Yeah, I think we can all agree that most recent one was Not garbage. Good. It's like, hey, you got to find three wayfarers and get to this planet. You know, it's so hidden and secret. And then, uh, oh, wait, here come a billion uh, rebel ships. Well, how did they get there without the wayfarers? Eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> They're there. Hey, remember that thing where, like, we had a Death Star that had a super laser on it that could destroy a planet? What if every ship just had that? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. It was like, come on, J.J. Abrams. What I think of the sequels is like is it's like when I go to the grocery store and I don't have a list of what I'm going to get. Yeah. I inevitably, I'm just walking around aimlessly like, oh, I need I need onions. Oh, wait, I also need yogurt. Oh, wait, I also need eggs. It's like they did not plan anything out and they missed things. Like I forgot the pickles. They forgot to actually make good movies. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what are you making with onions, yogurt, and eggs? That sounds disgusting. Pickles. Don't forget the pickles. The pickles. Breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> All right, guys. It's actually been 30 minutes about uh, on this stream. That's uh, I didn't think we would be this long. 
Uh, I hope anybody who sat here and listened to all this uh, uh, had had fun. And um, you know, I'll uh, we'll we'll do this again after the um, after the last episode. There and we'll take it from there. Sound like a plan, Bubba Fett and Mama? Affirmative. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I will wish you guys good night, and I will wish everybody out there a good night. All right. Adios. See you next time. Bye. Meow. Meow. <laughs>